This is episode number 20 and today I'm talking all about how you can build stronger bones and help prevent injury from falls. Welcome along to the DressageRiderTraining.com podcast. I'm Nicholas Smith and in each episode I'll bring you an educational or inspiring message to help you unlock your true potential as a dressage athlete. Are you ready? Let's get into it. The great thing about dressage and most riding is that generally speaking we can ride into our older years. In fact, the average age of our DRT members is 55, with our eldest being 82. And you don't have to look very far on social media to find the latest video showing somewhere in in their 90s still riding. I certainly hope that I'm lucky enough to still be riding in my later years, and it is the true passion and drive behind this program, because I believe it's going to take me until I'm 90 to be able to master horses and all that they have to teach us and so I want to keep myself healthy so I am able to still ride in my later years. One of the biggest issues however as we age is the health of our cartilage. Strip away our skin, our fascia, our muscles, organs, blood vessels, everything there and all that you're left with is your bones, the foundation providing passive structural support to your body. Cartilage is made up of water, collagen, and podiaglycans, and the protein polysaccharide bond that provides elasticity. What is commonly thought is that you can't control the integrity of your bones as you age. It's often thought that it's just inevitable that they'll become brittle. It's not also not often talked about the health of your cartilage in terms of the way tissues go. It's usually a fairly isolated area of our body. It doesn't contain blood vessels, so we can't deliver blood-borne nutrients to heal and grow it. And cartilage has no nerve cells, so we can't kind of feel what's going on. The truth is, though, bone is incredibly plastic. What this means is a response to activity and to nutrition. Bones are living metabolic tissue, And although you can't tell them what to do directly like you can with a muscle when you're strength training it, you can help them build their integrity and their strength from the signals that you send them. And this is no matter what age. So the signals that you want to be sending, they they vary and I'm going to run through each of these and go into each of them more deeply so that you can have an understanding of them. So the first one is about lifting heavy loads and moving your body quickly. Our bones respond to the intensity that's placed upon them. Lifting heavy weights and placing correct load onto your body is one of your osteoplast's favourite things for you to do. The load sends unmistakable signals that trigger your bones to begin to fortify themselves and adapt and become stronger. There are studies that prove all of this And I've got a link to the article on those studies if you want to have a look at them. Osteoplasts are to bones like chondroitocytes are to cartilage. Just like an osteoblast responds to a load by increasing bone mineral density, chondrocytes respond to the load by increasing cartilage growth and repair. You have to load it or you lose it. The more sedentary our job, the more sedentary our lifestyle, the less load we place on our body, the more brittle our bodies become. No matter the age of your bones, they respond to the same training signals. And the best type of training for all ages is a combination of impact training and resistance exercise. So not just placing heavy loads on your body through weights, but also movement that asks your body to move quickly improves your reaction time. So think, for example, things like sprinting or interval work that ask your body to move across the ground quickly. And it doesn't have to be running, and you don't have to freak out by the word sprinting. This could be simply high knees on the spot, skipping, jump squats. And the great thing about riding is when we're hopping on and off our horse, we are getting, we're we're working through those reactive times and also putting load 
on through our joints when we're landing onto the ground. But we also want to train our bones and our muscles to be able to move quickly because the less you move, the harder it is to become to move. And again, the softer and the more stiffer we become. There's, they've done studies where they, do, they study the bones of sprinters versus endurance athletes. And the shorter the duration and the higher the intensity of the movement helps to improve your bone density over time. So the endurance athletes, they had more brittle bones and the sprinters had stronger bones. Now, sprinting, this can be achieved by a variety of different ways. And the key is not to try and just rely on low impact exercise and just rely on your riding as your exercise. If you want to keep your bones healthy because you don't want to do it through um, just your riding, you want to make sure you're giving enough impact and enough stimulation to your bones to ask them to strengthen. Because otherwise what happens if we haven't got those strong bones simply takes a fall and we break our bones and it takes a long time to recover them. But if you are moving your body, you're keeping it healthy and active, those falls, those recoveries, those bones stay stronger. This is one of the reasons why we put this sort of training into our program and this helps many of our mature riders, like I said, average age is 55 and a rider is the combination of these factors and there's lots of different ways that you can do this to suit different levels of fitness and ability. So just the first one of these signals is lift heavy loads and get used to moving your body quickly. Number two is move around a lot. So motion is lotion. You need to walk, you need to build your foundation of movement off your horse. That's why I'm always harping on about your 10,000 step days. You need to develop daily movement practice that includes mobility and suppleness work too. Movement that works on your joint mobility, foam rolling and stretching. Because many joint injuries occur because the tissues surrounding them, your muscles, your fascia, the movers of your body are restricted. So by keeping your body moving and paying attention to keeping your muscles, your bone and your fascia healthy helps to make your body more elastic and helps to prevent injury by placing, without placing undue stress on the joint itself. Number three is walk over varied terrain. So luckily with horses, we tend to walk over various muddy, patch, muddy patches and hills and we're constantly walking over various terrains. But you imagine an office worker who's just got a footpath that's constantly even and then they come to the house, it's constantly even. This can create, um, the body gets used to this even structure. So then when it comes to you walking on some stones, you can simply just sprain an ankle, strain a ligament and it can put you out for a long time. But when we get the body used to walking over various terrains, we help to strengthen our ligaments, we help to strengthen our body, we help to allow our body to develop the proprioception, the adaptation to those different terrains, and again, that helps to strengthen your, your ligaments, your joints, to make them more supple, to make them more elastic, to make them more youthful, and again, prevent injury. So thinking of moving your body over different landscapes, um, trampling over fallen branches, slippery leaves, and, you, and asking your body to use its nervous, nervous system and its proprioception is a great way to help strengthen it. So think of walking over those different places by painting your cartilage in different positions versus, say, just constantly running on a treadmill. You want to make sure you're always varying the terrain to help prevent injury because the more elastic, the more supple your, your joints, your ligaments are, the less likely you, like, likely you are to have an injury. The fourth thing is to go barefoot. Everything starts with your body, with how your foot, foot connects to the ground. If you think about a thick slab of rubber blocking all the millions of nerve cells in your foot from sensing the ground, everything up the kinetic chain of your body suffers above it. So try and do introducing barefoot more often. And even if you start just around your house on the weekends, and of course common sense applies, this doesn't mean barefoot around your horses, but just that act of getting your feet on the ground, grounding yourself, activating those nerve cells on your feet, getting your feet used to the different terrains helps to strengthen the entire kinetic chain of your body, helps to 
connect those pathways, helps to improve your proprioception, your balance, your stability. Number five is to get outside into nature. Luckily with horses, we have them waiting at the gate for the stable door like Leo waiting for his breakfast and it's a great way for you to get outside. And sometimes during winter, the outside time can become limited, but spending out time in nature offers huge benefit for your body. First, you're more likely to be active, so therefore subjecting your joints to the loading of different environments to help that are required to keep them healthy. And you're also more likely to get more sunlight, which is linked to better cartilage health, especially in older adults. Plus, you're also going to lower your cortisol and improve your immune response. Elevated cortisol has been shown to impede cartilage repair and some types of arthritis are autoimmune in nature. So this is really important to make sure that you get that balance right. And I've talked about the hormonal balance in, in, your, in the sleep podcast and making sure you get that balance. Number six is consume more gelatin and collagen. Collagen is what makes up the significant portion of your bone matrix. Without collagen present, bone would be overlay, overly hard and likely to be brittle. Collagen provides elasticity to help prevent fractures. Glycine underpins the growing bone and sourcing it from both things like supplemental collagen or from bone broth is a great way for you to obtain it. The reason why drinking broth and eating collagen makes it so many people feel better is because it's providing the fundamental nutrient called glycine. Our bodies need about 10 grams of glycine each day to maintain basic metabolic functions. We can only make 3 grams of this, so 7 grams must come from your diet, and a major function of glycine is to maintain and repair your cartilage. It's for this reason I like to add collagen to my smoothie each day and there are lots of brands out there. You should just be sure to purchase a brand that is organic and 100% grass fed. Then during winter one of the ways I like to do this is to simply make homemade bone broths and soups because they're naturally loaded with collagen. If you're training hard and you're feeling stiff and you're trying to recover from existing damage, your glycine needs to increase. A study found that supplementary collagen improves joint pain in athletes who complain about their needs. And more recently, a study found that giving dietary collagen alongside theanol in patients with osteoarthritis improved joint pain and function as well. Number seven is dairy. Dairy gets a really bad rap these days, and many including me, are intolerant to lactose. However, most serious researchers recommend that older people in risk of osteoarthritis consume more dairy, not less. In fact, people who consume dairy because of an allergy have low... People who can't consume dairy because of an allergy have lower bone mineral density. And so it's important to increase your consumption if you can tolerate dairy. For me personally... I can't have lactose, but I can have some dairy. So some dairy is without lactose. So I still consume hard cheeses and butter. So they are my go-to. And for optimal results, eat dairy that's minimally processed and contains additional bone-friendly nutrients like butter, goat cheese with vitamin K2 or yogurt or kefir. Another great way to get that is through your cod liver oil, which I have talked about before, and that's got the one that I have is your green pastures cod liver oil with your vitamin K2 butter oil included within that. So that's incredible for your joint and your bone health. Number eight, good quality sleep. So lack of good quality sleep affects your bone health in a number of ways. So you have your endogenous growth factors like human growth hormone, which plays a major role in cartilage repair. Growth hormone is largely produced at night during your sleep. So whether you're recovering from some micro damage caused by some training that you may have done, or from regular loading or a degenerative damage caused by poor biomechanics or injuries, or um, from some sort of autoimmune condition, sleep is where most of your repairs happen. 
So sleep dura- duration is inversely associated with osteoporosis. Less sleep leads to greater bone loss. More sleep protects it. You see melatonin and ho- the hormone that is induced through sleepiness at night plays a huge role in your bone metabolism. So improving one's circadian cycle and sleep quality is a vital component for keeping your bones healthy. Again, you have to have a listen to the podcast that I did all about sleep so you can get a real good understanding of how you can improve your sleep quality. Number nine, stay hydrated, drink mineral water. Dehydrated tendons are dry, stiff and completely unmanageable. Hydrated tendons are slippery, pliable and still tough as nails. Now consider that cartilage and tendons are made of very similar stuff. Without hydration, cartilage doesn't slide as easily and it can't do its job. Once you have cartilage damage, hydration is even more important because damaged cartilage is harder to hydrate. The type of water you drink can affect how well hydrated your body becomes because in order to penetrate the cells, your body needs minerals. Traditionally, all water was mineral water. It came from local springs or bores and contained valuable trace minerals. However, this water was also associated with leaving mineral films on dishes and clogging pipes and it got the name hard water. So today most water is treated and stripped of minerals. The calcium and magnesium that is present in mineral water or artesian water is highly bioavailable, meaning it's very easily absorbed and used by the body. Both minerals are extremely important for bone health and mineral water is effective, delicious way to obtain more. So if you can source mineral water and you have got a local bore or spring nearby, then that's the type of water you should be drinking. However, sometimes this is not possible. So a great sports drink recipe or to have in your water is to simply have your 750 mils of your filtered water and then add to that a pinch of Himalayan salt and the juice of a lemon. This helps to, number one, this, the lemon and the vitamin C helps to support your adrenals. And this Himalayan salt introduces those minerals back into the water. And if you have filtered water, you have stripped out any of the chemicals that may be on a town supply. So having that recipe and that variety of water helps to keep your bones, your ligaments, your joints hydrated. Number 10, load up on these natural nutrients and foods. So the first one I'm going to talk about is melatonin. In order for your body to produce the, promote a really healthy melatonin production, it's important to optimise your circadian cycle. So getting plenty of full natural light earlier in your day, avoiding blue light in the evening, and getting good quality sleep consistently promotes your melatonin production. Second thing to think about, as mentioned before, is cod liver oil. This is really high in vitamin A, and it has the correct preformed retinol with enough vitamin D to balance your intake. And my favourite brand is the Green Pastures brand, and I get it with the vitamin K butter oil in it to help with skin health, um, repair, recovery. I got into this hugely when I had very bad adrenal fatigue, leaky gut, skin problems, all of the awesome stuff that completely drains your energy, and cod liver oil, looking after gut health and your circadian cycle were some of the key components to help rebuild that. Next one is molasses, blackstrap molasses. This is not just for horses, but a tablespoon of blackstrap molasses will give you 180 milligrams of calcium, 48 milligrams of magnesium, and about 20% of your daily copper needs. Next nutrients to think about is vitamin D, vitamin A, and vitamin K2. These three synergistically promote healthy bone metabolism. Both vitamin D and vitamin K2 have been shown to improve osteoporosis. For vitamin D, get good sunlight exposure or you can supplement. And you can the vitamin D is available again in that cod liver brand that I talked about, but you can also buy vitamin D with a K2 introduced into it as a supplement as well. Next thing to introduce into your diet and your life is lots of leafy greens. Greens like kale, spinach contain important minerals, calcium and magnesium and the polyphenols to help with bone health and inflammation. 
Another thing to think about is small bony fish. Fish contain their bone, fish that contain their bones like sardines provide the important pro bone trio of animal protein, anti-inflammatory omega-3s, and bioavailable calcium. Not to mention the nutrients and vitamins that help increase the healing of broken bones as well as fortify and promote healthy ones. So now I'll go on to some other things to think about as well. So number 11 is to avoid chronic inflammation. So when we're trying to keep ourselves healthy and reduce inflammation in our body, as well as keep our joints healthy, processed foods, foods that are high in omega-6, foods that you're intolerant to, too much sugar, alcohol, caffeine, can all lead to inflammation and inhibit the creation of new bone cells. Studies have shown that reducing inflammation has been shown to restore the lost osteoplast activity. So pay attention to inflammation in your diet and pay attention to I'm sorry, pay attention to any foods that cause inflammation in your diet and getting, making sure that you're eating a diet that is based on real whole foods that I've talked about and foods that are well balanced to provide your body with energy. Number 12 is eating high quality, quality protein. Increasing your protein intake, particularly good quality animal protein, protects and strengthens your bones and helps provide the building blocks in preserving and building bone health. But try not to stick to just protein as well. Increase your plant-based real fo foods alongside this and you have a really great strategy when you're eating a good base of real whole foods. And a good way to think of this is if your grandma's grandmother wasn't eating it, then try and avoid it. So it's all the packaged processed foods with all the additives, the sauces with all of the mixes and sugars and all those sorts of things you're wanting to avoid. So real food doesn't need a list of ingredients. Real food is the ingredients. Think of a one ingredient pantry. So a carrot is a carrot, a lemon is a lemon. If you wanted to make a ginger and lemon chicken stir fry, you would get the lemon, you would get the ginger, you would use some broth and the chicken and you would make it in a pan versus buying a packet of sauce off the shelf that's full of sugar and all of these ingredients that you don't know because every single thing you put in your mouth has an impact on your body. So when you base your diet around whole real food, that's what your body knows what to use and that's what helps to build a healthy body, healthy bones, healthy energy. And then you want to also think about making sure that you do increase your plant-based foods as well. So making sure that you're getting lots of fruit and vegetables because they're full of potassium and magnesium which help to build better bone health. So there you have a list of all of the things to do to improve your bone health. I'll just quickly run through them again. So the signals you want to be sending your body to improve bone health and prevent injuries. Number one, lift heavy loads and move quickly. Number two, move around a lot. Number three, walk over varied terrain. Number four, go barefoot. Five, get outside in nature. Six, consume more gelatin and collagen. Seven, try and get some good quality dairy if you can tolerate it. Eight, good quality sleep. Nine, stay hydrated and drink mineral water. 10, load up of nutrient dense foods like melatonin, load up on nutrients and nutrient dense foods, so improving your melatonin production. Cod liver oil, blackstrap molasses, vitamin D, leafy greens, small bony fish. Number 11, avoid chronic inflammation. 12, eat high pro quality protein. And number 13, eat lots of plants. So bone health can be improved no matter what you age. Again, the less we move our body, the less we keep our body confined in chairs and at a desk, the more brittle, the more stiff, the less um, youthfulness is in our body. But a body can bounce back no matter what age. You can improve your health no matter what age. And there are so many studies about the benefits of getting the right food, the right movement into your body to improve your bone health. And where I come from is just simply about improving your longevity. Because when we're riding in our older years, 
you hear everybody say we don't bounce as much as we used to and this is true but you can also improve your bounce by improving your fascia, your connective tissue, your ligaments, your joints, your bones, your cartilage by taking care of your body. And I certainly want to be taking care of my body so that again, if I do fall, I hopefully, <laughs> hopefully bounce and making sure that I'm riding into my long later years so that I can improve and keep improving in this game that we call dressage. So I hope you found that useful. And I hope there are some simple tips that you can improve to help improve your cartilage, your joints, so that if you do have a fall, you have reduced your risk of injury and you can get back in the saddle as quickly as possible. That's it for this episode. If you found it helpful, make sure you download my free guide at dressageridertraining.com. It will help you get started on your journey to becoming the best rider you can be. If you know others who might like the show, please do share this with them. My goal is to help others enjoy their riding even more by taking care of themselves as much as they do their horses. And finally, if you have time to give this podcast a review, it would mean the world to me. Thank you so much for listening, and I'll see you on the next episode.